Hello, and welcome to For Him Online Ministries. For Jesus Christ Online Ministries. This ministry is all about spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, spreading, <clears throat> excuse me, spreading the truth around the world. I thank the Lord so much for spreading the messages around the world. So much is going on in the ministry, but right now I'm involved in uh, calling out four nations. Yesterday was the nation of Kenya. Today, April the 21st, calling out the nation of Uganda for April the 28th for a day of fasting and a day of repentance and asking the whole world to join in next Wednesday, April the 28th, 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Uganda time um, to join in. And pastors and preachers and people have been responding from all over the world. It is so amazing what the Lord is doing. I'm going to go ahead and get into the message. I want to give you the title, then I'm going to pray and then get into the message. The title of the message today is To All Preachers and Christians in the Nation of Uganda, 28. 421 Uganda time 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. And calling out the nation of Uganda. This message is towards the nation of Uganda, but it's for the whole world, for all of us. And asking every preacher, pastor, Christian around the world. And so many have joined. It's unbelievable. It's exploded. And I thank the Lord for that. And I believe the Lord's opened the eyes to a lot of Christians around the world. And I'm going to read the text verse. And then I'm going to uh, pray. It's uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And the Holy Spirit has brought out so much more things for me. Uh, so I'm uh, going to get into prayer. Heavenly Father, I come to you right now, and I thank you, Lord, for the nation of Uganda. I thank you for the movement of these four nations, Kenya, Uganda, India, and Pakistan. I thank you for all the pastors and preachers and Christians around the world and in all four of these nations that are coming together on behalf of all four of these nations. Thank you for that, Lord. I pray that you will grab a hold. It's uh, it's over 46 million in the population of Uganda. And, oh, Heavenly Father, I pray that millions of souls across Uganda will receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. And we are praying and coming together and agreeing as one that revival will start in Uganda and sweep all over the continent of Africa, along with Kenya, India, and Pakistan, and sweep all over the world. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. And I just got to tell you, people, pastors, Christians, I've had so many pastors from around the world asking me, Brother Keith, when is our nation? And last Thursday night, I preached a message to all preachers, pastors, Christians around the world. It, this is for everyone. This is for the whole world, not just for these four nations. I have had pastors in Liberia, Nigeria, Congo, the Republic of Congo, Malawi, Bangladesh, uh, so many more nations, and all of them have joined in. This is for all of us. And, and the Lord moved upon my heart, the Holy Spirit moved upon my heart 
to address this before I get into 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Jesus said in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Each and every pastor, Christian, each and every church, church member, Bible student all over the world, we are responsible for the whole world. Yes, we are responsible for our Jerusalem. We are responsible for our city. Yes, we are responsible for the county and for the state and for the nation. But, oh, we are responsible for the uttermost parts of the world. We are responsible for India and Pakistan and Uganda and Kenya and all of the other nations. And the Lord, I believe, is opening the eyes of so many people and saying, Brother Keith, these, this is opening my eyes to the needs of everyone. And so many Yesterday, joined in with the nation of Uganda. I, I got uh, uh, of Kenya. I got pictures from people, and it's so unbelievable the movement of God on this, of this, of the next four weeks. And next week is the nation of Uganda, and then the week after that is India. The week after that is Pakistan, and I've sent out articles and. And messages gonna next two days gonna be sending this message out to everyone, and asking you to share the articles, share the messages, and uh, people are doing it everywhere. By the way, uh, answer to prayer, Jesus. I uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, a, a young man, I believe in. Uh, can't remember Congo. I think he is starting today. Uh, on the battle for Jericho, translating it into Portuguese for Pastor Abano. Uh, I just sent the name and number <clears throat> to uh, the, of another preacher. Uh, I believe he's the one in Congo. Uh, to a pastor, Ben Avenue in Benin, uh, West Africa. And uh, he's going to start translating the messages in French. And, and the Lord is working in for him online ministries it's amazing but i'm telling you i believe the lord is opening the eyes of the believers for the needs of everyone around the world uh, the souls of uh, lost souls i can't get out this number out of my mind this population that i uh, I'm fixing to tell you, one billion seven hundred and sixteen million two hundred and seventy-two thousand six hundred and seventy-eight souls uh, as of last week for these four nations, and God wants us to cry for these and fast for these, and so many around the world fasted for the sake of Kenya yesterday, and repent day of repentance and we came together and agreed kenya time 2 to 3 p.m and prayed and came together for the nation of kenya and i'm praying that everyone will join in april the 28th next week and all to all of you ugandans i'm calling you out for a day of repentance april the 28th a day of fasting April the 28th for the nation of Uganda. Each and every preacher, pastor, Christian, oh, you got to come together in the name of Jesus Christ. I know so many out there are not preaching the truth and trying to get to heaven all other ways. You can't get together with them. It's we got to it's got to be the same road under the blood of Jesus Christ. It's got to be that way. He is the only way to heaven. and um, But anyway, the population of Uganda as of last week, 46,830,931 souls. Oh, I, I get messages from people, uh, thumbs up or uh, amen or praise God. And then I'll send the message to the preacher 
uh, I'm amazed that there's so many pastors and preachers from these four nations that hasn't even responded. I know that they are busy. I, I know that. I get that. It doesn't take much to fast for the nation and pray for their own nation. And I'm just praying and begging and pleading. But I, I have sent voice messages and I'll send tight messages to these preachers and pastors. Yes, amen is good. And yes, thumbs up is good. But hey, let's get involved. Let's spread the message. Let's spread the article. Let's get on our knees and cry for the nation of Kenya. Let's get on our knees and cry for the nation of Uganda. That God will grab a hold of them. And God will. And God will listen. He is longing for revival all over the world. And I believe it's so close. I believe that it, it is so close. And I wanted to bring this out. The Holy Spirit just moved upon my heart to bring that verse out. And I will talk more about this in closing at the end of the message. I'll come back to this. Uh, <clears throat> and so I want to take a look at, at 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And I want to read the first part again. If my people, which are called by my name, and um, I want to, if you would, turn to 1 John chapter 5, verses 10 through 13. And I want to dig deeper in if my people, which are called by my name. I talked a lot about it last week, but as the name of a Christian, they were first called Christian at Antioch. At Antioch. But I want to take a look at these verses in 1 uh, John chapter 5, verse 10 through 13. Allergies has really gotten a hold of me. <laughs> um, and if you have allergies and trying to preach, you know what I'm talking about. Pollen doesn't sit well with me. And uh, But anyway, uh, 1 John 10. I want to ask you this question, each and every person. Billions and billions of people around the world claim that they're Christians and claim that they're going to heaven. And I, I so am afraid and believe in, in my own families and, and all across the world. So many believe they're going to heaven. Verse, uh, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 is for my people is for which are called by my name. And if the true born-again Christian, the true believer, preacher, be true Bible student that's a, a believer in Jesus Christ, if, if they will do this, then God's promise will come. My question to you is, get in the mirror and look and ask yourself, Am I a true born-again Christian? And here in a few minutes, I'm going to explain to you on how you can find out if you are truly his. Uh, I'm so reminded of what Jesus said. You preached in my name. You did perform miracles in my name. And our pastor preached an awesome message Sunday on Judas Issachariot. He had the power for miracles. He had the power to cast out demons. He had the power to preach the gospel. And he was a devil of the devil. Never got saved. Never got born again. And betrayed the innocent one. And went to hell. And the Bible says that uh, the devil sends his ministers as angels of light. And... <clears throat> So <clears throat> I'm wanting to address this. I'm wanting to address this. If my people, which are called by my name, by these verses in verse 10 through 13, starting with verse 10, he that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in him. Now I read in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, and to the Christian, you got to understand this, that that. The Holy Spirit had not yet been given to the new believers in the New Testament, the New Covenant, 
until the day of Pentecost, when they came down like tongues of fire on top of all of the 120. And that is when they received the Holy Spirit. And then it happened again to the Gentiles. It only happened twice. And you see through all of the Bible and through all church history and today, the moment that you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior is the moment that the Holy Spirit dwells inside of you. And the Apostle John is addressing this, and this is what he said. On the Son of God hath the witness in himself, the Holy Spirit. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And verse 11, this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. The, the eternal life is given to us by God. Oh, and I'm telling you, how do you get it away from you? You can't. Why? It is through his son. It is not through any of us and what we have done or what we have not done, except for receive Christ as our Savior. <clears throat> and so the Holy Spirit dwells inside of us. And so he has to witness. And then in verse 12, it is so simple. Verse 12, he that hath the son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. It does not take a Bible scholar. It does not take a doctrine of theology. It does not take a doctorate degree to understand that verse. It is absolutely so simple that a little child can understand that verse. And then in verse 13, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may be believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know, that ye may realize. I am asking you to ask yourself this question. Now, I ask myself this same question. You must have two births. According to John chapter 3, Jesus told Nicodemus in, um, uh, let me see, John chapter 3, verse 8, uh, man's not going to see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. Nicodemus was confused. Can I enter into my mother's womb a second time and be born? Jesus said in verse 8, ye must be born again. And he was explaining to Nicodemus, the flesh, not baptism. So many believe you get to heaven through baptism. All you do is get wet. It's a commandment from God that you're identifying to the world when you are baptized that you have received Christ as your Savior. And you're letting the world know you're identifying yourself with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he very clearly explains that in John chapter 3. I ask you, if you don't quite know if you're saved or not, to watch the message on my YouTube channel titled, John 3.16, Ye Must Be Born Again. I know what John 3.16 is. So many have looked at that to see what it's talking about. The first part of that message, it's all about what Jesus, the conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus. The last part of that message is all about John 3.16. And I explain to you in detail about the second birth. Now, I look in the mirror and I ask myself, look in this camera. Keith Watts, do you have two births? Yes, I do. On April the 30th, 1964, in Fort Worth, Texas, I was born to my parents, Edward and Norma Watts, in Fort Worth, Texas. 
Keith Watts do you have that second birth that Jesus talked to Nicodemus about? Yes, I do. Because on a Sunday morning in 1974 at Community Baptist Church, Mary Nam showed this 10-year-old little boy how to receive Jesus Christ as his Savior. And in that Sunday school class, I got on my knees that Sunday morning and received Jesus Christ as my Savior. And the Holy Spirit dwelled in immediately. Oh, and I felt him. And he's never left me since. Oh, yes, I've grieved him and grieved him. I don't know what day it was, but I do know it was on a Sunday morning in 1974. And Jesus Christ has that record in Fort Worth, Texas. And so I ask each and every one of you, ask yourself this question. And then watch John 3, 16. You must be born again. Oh, I ask you to do that. Why? It is so important to fulfill 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. It is so important to fulfill it. And the only way that we can fulfill it is everyone that participates and involved in this is my people, is called by my name. No, oh, I ask you to examine yourself to see if you are birthed into the family of God. Are you his sons and daughters? We call each other brothers and sisters in Christ. Oh, I'm telling you, we've got to be born again. And so I want to move on to the next one. Shall humble themselves. Oh, shall humble themselves. Turn, if you would, to James. Chapter 4. James, chapter 4, verse 6 through 10. I know that I dealt with this some last week, but oh, the Holy Spirit laid it upon my heart to deal with this more. Notice the steps. I talked a few minutes about this last week, but I want to talk about it again. The steps here. The, uh, the prophet um, in Chronicles, uh, in these verses, gives steps for us to accomplish this. The first step, to humble ourselves. The second, to pray. The third, to seek my face. The fourth, re true repentance, turn from our wicked ways. He's talking to his people. He's talking to his Christians. He's talking to those that are called in my name to do this, to humble yourself, to pray, to seek my face, to turn from your wicked ways. He's talking to the born again Christian. Oh, Christian, it's time to look and smell and act like Jesus Christ and represent him well on the face of this earth. James chapter 4, verse 6 through 10. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resist, resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Oh, I'm telling you, if God's called you to do something, oh, we need more and more grace. I have been praying for more and more grace. I have been praying for the more sustaining power of the Holy Spirit. And oh, I'm telling you, the Lord has been listening. And oh, I need his grace more and more. And I need his sustaining power more and more for what he has called this preacher to do. Oh, I'm telling you, God resisteth the proud but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee for you, from you. If you're tired of the devil hanging around you, humble yourself. When you humble yourself, and you say no to the devil, the Bible, James, the apostle, James, the preacher, the pastor, James, said the devil will flee from you. If you're sick and tired of him hanging around you and in your day and the demons, humble yourself and say no to the devil. And then third, he will flee from you. He did it to our Savior. Jesus resisted him. He is already humble. He's been fasting 40 days. It, it'll humble you. And then he 
plead from him when he quoted the verses of scriptures. When you're tempted, quote John 3.16 out loud. When you're tw tempted, quote other verses. <laughs> what happens? They flee. I like to remind them of them going to hell and cast into the lake of fire. Quote that out loud. Verse 8. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. You double-minded Christians. Quit being double-minded. Quit being two-faced. Quit showing a front, pastor. You got you to gotta give an account to the good shepherd on how you shepherd the sheep. I believe there's going to be a, a whole a lot of pastors scared to death before their their good shepherd Jesus in Corinthian and uh, Timothy Peter Paul talking to his young preacher and young pastor be afflicted and mourn and weep let your laughter be turned to mourning oh we need to cry for the nation of Uganda and Kenya and everywhere and your joy to heaviness Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. I would whole lot rather have my precious Savior lift me up than mankind lift me up, or myself lift me up. Oh, we need to humble ourselves. And so I'm asking you, Preacher, pastor, Christian in Uganda and around the world, Bible student, church member, I'm asking you to take the first step. You know what happens all around the world in all of the nations for the preachers, pastors, Bible students, church members around the world. You know what happens? And I was thinking about this last night as I was writing down this message and going over this message and going over it this morning. How many around the world, how many across the continent of Africa passes the first step and gets into prayer and gets into fasting and gets into trying to seek the face of God? Oh, it's null and void until you take steps back to that very first one. You look at the steps, and when you have a man or woman, a pastor, preacher, Bible student, church member, whatever the evangelist, missionary, whatever the Lord has called you, and you look in the mirror, you know in your heart, if you're truly 100% humble, oh, please, preacher, pastor across Uganda, preacher, pastor across all over the world, Oh, please take the first step. I'm asking you, go over these verses, James 4, 6 through 10. If you're questioning your salvation, go over 1 John 5, 10 through 13. And like I said to the uh, nation of Kenya, start today. The moment you listen to this message, you start preparing for April the 28th. And it's so amazing how so many pastors and churches in the four nations are joining in for each other nations and joining in for these days and all around the world. Thank the Lord for that. And so when you reach that first step, humble themselves and pray and seek my face. I'm telling you what, what's going to happen if you truly humble yourself, you will actually, for the first time in years or days or however long, pray. And you will be able to seek God's face. Oh, you'll be able to do that. And when you humble yourself, and when you truly pray, and when you truly seek God's face, you will truly Repent and turn from your wicked ways. And then here comes the promises. 
Oh, can you imagine what will happen? Oh, and I and I meant to tell you this. If we are called to preach around uh, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the other most parts of the earth, aren't we not called to fast for other nations and pray for other nations and cry for other nations and pour our heart out for other nations? Oh, I'm telling you, we need to do that. And then... Right before closing, the the promises. Oh, the three promises that the Lord gives at the end here. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And I talked about the steps last week. I won't get into it as much this week. The steps. Does God hear your prayers? You know. I'm telling you, when you pray, I'm putting a prayer request on my Facebook page last night. Oh, praise the Lord. Sister Naomi is is taking the messages, three of them. The Battle of Jericho, what can wash your sins away? And I believe, preacher and Christian, do you have a burden for lost souls? And has translated into Swahili. And she's taken the west side of Kenya, all of Kenya. And Pastor Alex on the east side of Kenya is taking all of the west side of Kenya. And we're praying for two projectors and two laptops. Well, I asked, was going to ask for $220 to rent a projector and a laptop for Sister Naomi because we can't get it to her in time. May the 1st and May the 2nd, a two-day conference of 10 churches in that area and and people from all over that area is coming there. And she is going to be showing these three messages on a rented projector and a rented laptop. The Lord has already given money for the projectors and the uh, the laptop computers that we are going to buy used here in America. As of right now, $600 is giving to that cause for Sister Naomi and, and Pastor Alex in Kenya. And I don't know how much more it's going to take. I'm I'm uh, dealing with a, a preacher called to be an evangelist, Brother Alex in Nebraska, another Alex involved. And uh, I just ask you to pray for that. But I was going to put the prayer request on there uh, for the $220. And it was given before I put it on the Facebook page. Praise the Lord. Oh, we need to get to the point where we humble ourselves. God, There's times when I'm so close to God, I thank him before I even finish the prayer, answering that prayer. And I actually thanked him for that prayer before I finished it, because I knew in my heart he was going to answer it. How close are you, preacher? How close are you, Christian church member? How close are you to your God? Do you truly reach his face when you fast? Oh, do you do that? And then he will heal our land. Millions upon millions across America, around the world. These four nations and around the world are going to get saved before the rapture of the church. And in closing, here in Romans chapter 14, verse 7, the Lord, the Holy Spirit moved upon my heart to close with this verse. And this is dealing with all pastors and preachers and Christians around the world joining in this movement of God. This has nothing to do with this preacher or his name or fame or fortune or money or likes or views on the channel. This has everything to do, and those of y'all that know me, is so. It, this is true. It has everything to do with these lost souls getting saved. It has everything to do with revival starting all over the world. 7.9 billion souls around the world as of 2021. Romans chapter 14, verse 7. For none of us liveth to himself. No man dieth to himself. It is a fact that there are particles in every bit of the auction around the whole world that each and every one of us has shared and breathed in the same oxygen. We need to get concerned. Oh, we need to get concerned about 
lost souls. Are you? Oh, and I'm telling you, when our sins are forgiven. And I, I want to bring up this verse, 1 John 1, 9. Uh, it, the uh, Apostle John brought it out. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Repentance. Turn from your wicked ways. He is so ready for us to be totally clean, totally humble, and then pray, and then seek his face and move the heart of God like the heroes of the Bible did. I pray that you will join in. Oh, I pray that you will. April the 28th, 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Uganda time, which is the same as Kenya time. Google the times for your area. I know that for the eastern United States, it is 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. Lord bless you. Bye-bye.